I'm Dr. Jill Goldman. I'm an animal behaviorist and comparative psychologist. I have a PhD in primate communication, a master's of science in wolf communication. I listen to what the animals are saying, I watch what the animals are doing, and I translate that for people to help resolve any behavioral issues the animals may be having. There you go. I get to spend every day helping people understand the extraordinary animals we share this world with. You are stunning. It doesn't matter what animal you have, whether it be a tiger, a monkey, a dog, a cat, a parrot, it doesn't matter. If you're having a problem with your animal, I'm going to come in and resolve that issue. So this is Taboo, and um, she's 11 years old. I'm going to be assessing a tigress who does not like men. You're hey, don't back, Shh, don't back away. Okay. We are looking at an extremely dangerous situation. We're going to need to give her time for her to learn how to trust again. Today, we are going to be looking at a litter of Alaskan gray wolves. So the four of us are going to just move together as a group and we will um, see if we can get them up into that corner. This is a female pup. This is her first spa day. It's incredible how these small foxtails get caught into the paws. It can cause a lot of damage. My experience with wolves includes living with them. I had a trailer. I'd wake up in the middle of the night. I'd go visit them and go to their den. I learned a lot. When I go to see a case, I always try to get the animal's perspective. Okay, he's head shy. Number one, right there. The last thing you want is a therapy animal who bites kids. His default is back up, back up, back up, which is wonderful because he doesn't want to be aggressive. He's licking his lips, he's telling you he's feeling stressed. I'm feeling anxious. Where am I going? But if I don't move, I think everything will be okay. I talk for the animal. I try to give the perspective of the animal for them to understand where the animal is coming from. It's an alarm call, do you hear that? It's, it's like a buzzer. It's an alarm call saying, watch out, watch out, watch out. There's something close by. Well, I'd be very careful if I were you. Yeah, he's, he's ready to strike. <laughs> you know, if, if me moving away isn't going to be enough, and then I turn around and I'm trying to create more distance between us, and you still keep petting me, I have no other choice but to bite you. General body posture often tells me a lot about what the animal is feeling, and maybe what the animal will be doing. The, her ears, when she's really peeved off, will twist around so you can see the back of her ears. Whoa. He's biting, he is biting the wood. He is not biting the fence. And he is trying his very best to fight against what his natural instincts are telling him to do. Ooh, this he's is, the boss. Yes, he is. Wow. This is Bo. Look at everything in his body posture is saying, get away from this, <laughs> Isn't this is mine. Whatever they have, it's mine. What happens when we're pushed and pushed and pushed? We become aggressive. Oh, he's being... Get away from me. big territory. Here we go, here we go. Get the hell away from me. Well, somebody just got schooled. Well, I'll just go and get myself another piece of chicken. You know, eating is a very difficult behavior to make an animal do if they don't want to. We know that she's probably in some kind of physical pain, which also, you know, when you're in pain, you don't want to eat. So she has a few things going on. You can't force them to eat. What we want to do is stimulate her appetite. And what I found is that if you can get the dog to start licking something, then it might encourage them to start eating. Well, he's backing off. He's backing off. He's backing off. He's not coming to yeah. you. Poor little thing. He's scared. What Tom was doing was moving the mouse in an unrealistic way. So what I showed him was to simulate the movement of the mouse on a ground level rather than flying. I'm a scientist with a heart. I'm feeling something walking on my bed as though it were a cat. 
but there's no cat there. It's unusual that somebody would keep the coffin in their bedroom. Why did you feel that you But I'm a mortician, to... see, so it's okay with me. I didn't know whether I was imagining things or I was really feeling something. I do miss him every day. I'm not coming here for any particular behavioral issue except to give him the respect and the understanding of talking about his loss and what he's going through. Let's start first by making her part of the family and giving her a name. She is a living creature. She's part of your home. What do you think would be an appropriate name for her? Boots. Boots? Yeah. Ooh, that's a good name. If we're not able to relate to an animal via a name, then we think they're like an object. Do you feel <laughs> a little different now that she has a name? Yeah, yeah. All right. Many times I know what's best for the animal. And even though I tell the client what to do, in many cases, they'll do what they want to do. Do you want to go now? Yes. Well, I'm just saying that we, you, we were going to do this to, so that well, they can get together. The environment, so let's have them meet each other. It's stressing me out no more than the dogs. So you have a growl. <laughs> That's what happens when you move too fast. I'm actually quite frustrated right now. I'm, I'm pissed off actually because one of the determining factors of a successful case is whether or not the person will cooperate. Do you have owner compliance? Once you tape him, once you put a little bit of electrical tape on his mouth, then he's really calm. Taking him and wrapping him up and then forcing him to endure being touched. If anybody did that to me, you're looking at your fingers. No. You're in a very bad situation right now. Ow! Why is he being corrected? How have you learned how to train her? Make the dog do what you said you were said to do. The philosophy that you have is excellent, but you're using also a lot of physical correction. When we see a behavior we want, we want to reward it heavily so it repeats. Should I sit or should I jump? When I sit, I get everything. What should I do? Well, clearly I'm gonna sit because I get more when I sit than when I jump. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme give now, gimme now, give it to me now. You don't wanna give them all that they want. You wanna give them just enough to keep them interested. I think you just fixed my marriage. <laughs> she sees the man you feed her. She sees the man you feed her and she can then take the food from you in the presence of the man standing right next to you. Maybe you wanna pick which one is your yeah, favorite. Oh, <laughs> clearly the almonds are favorite. I will not leave one raisin behind, making sure I eat every single one of them. Oh, it's not fair. Give me some, please. Give me, give me some. Thank you. Dr. Jill helped us a lot as far as why he was so agitated because we keep aggravating him. Usually when I don't hear from a client, that's good news. Well, it's been a month and we're really excited because yes. Bailey is doing amazing. It was good, it was very productive. I learned to do the opposite of what I've been doing for the most part, which is to use positive reinforcement as opposed to negative. We do teach regular monthly seminars and we'll be incorporating this information into our, our regular educational programs. We got a, we've got a chorus howl. Hand feeding is one of the greatest things that help a relationship. It is a currency that bonds individuals. She ate most of that giant meatball I made for her. Such a relief. After she was able to nourish herself, Dr. Jill took her for a little walk with me, and uh, she started doing her old prance again, and she was looking fantastic. She had a spring in her step, kind of a sparkle in her eye. It reminded me very much of the old Hazel. When I see a smile on my client's face, because they feel better about the relationship they have with their animal, that makes my day. You think she's gonna have a long and prosperous career? Oh yes, she already has it, and I think it'll be forever and ever, because like me, you know, if you're that good in your business, they'll never want you to retire. There's nobody more educated in animal behavior than somebody who's got a PhD in one. It was certainly insightful. I think it helped the relationship with the horse, yeah. Just like any relationship, you want it to be stable, and this is what she needs too. Thank you very much, Allie. Every time I see an animal more comfortable, more at ease, more relaxed, in a situation that used to trigger stress and discomfort and aggression, makes me feel that I am here for a reason. This picture right here signifies what family and siblings are all about. They are bonded together. They could not be closer. It's an amazing day. It really is an amazing day. I feel like I'm drunk.
I am Dr. Jill Goldman. This is my life. Go Padre, go get it. Whoa! This is my passion. My job was to be like his mom, and I took that on very seriously. I'm a changed person from this experience. I'm living the life that I've dreamt of since I was a little girl. Thank you for joining me to learn animal as a second language. But that was when I ruled the 